Shalom, shalom, guys. Uh, we are back. I'm back with Kelly, and uh, it has been a while since we've had her on the channel. I'm looking forward to asking her some questions. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about her journey as a first wife coming through theory into the practice, the practicality, and the experience of all of this. And I, I pray that this will be especially beneficial to ladies um, as we talk through some of the different things, um, the challenges, the ups and downs, um, and so that sort of thing. So come along with us and we're going to take you on part of our journey as, uh, as we have moved into being a plural family and Kelly talking specifically about the journey of a first wife. Okay, so um, wow. I guess uh, <laughs> Kelly Kelly has been anticipating and not anticipating this video. <laughs> I, to be perfectly honest, because in some respects, it's like you want to share, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> I want to get it done and over with. <laughs> it's not quite like that. But no, yeah. no, sir, um, it's not. You, you do want to share, but I know that uh, uh, even a couple weeks ago, it was still some of the initial emotion of kind of making the transition into yes, reality yes, sir. was, uh, you know, she came to me the other day and she says, when are we going to make this video? And I said, well, I was kind of waiting on you. She says, well, I've been waiting on you. I said, <laughs> anyway. Okay. So good stuff. But she's got a bunch of notes and we're going to talk about this. Our journey. Now, just a quick recap. If some of y'all see some of the uh, older videos that we've done together, we've done a few videos together. I kind of talk a little bit about uh, at points, we've talked about pieces of the journey up to, um, I guess the last one of those we made was probably really before we started courting Lily, um, I would think. I, I don't think we did any. No, we sir, haven't, we haven't It's been a while any. since we've done. It, okay. it has been. It's been a quite a while. Okay. So um, what I want to do, I guess, you would have to go back to some of that for details, but the bottom line is that I came to an understanding of, um, of what Scripture says about marriage probably 10 years ago next month, because I think the first paper that I published on my blog, I published on Christmas Day, hoping nobody would see it, that it would fly under the radar. And I did it on Christmas Day. I'm pretty sure it was 2013. Has it been that long? I think it has been that long. God. Because I published it when we were um, living in Irmo with a family from our fellowship. We were transitioning between a house that we had sold and a house that, uh, and the house that we were looking for. And that was 2013, wasn't it? I thought we were in the yellow house already so it might have been 2012 i don't think it was 2012 i think it was 2013 i can go look it up wow. but it's been at least That's not it, it's been probably 10 years and maybe 11 years that i've been on this journey of understanding that's crazy but uh, even with me publishing things on my blog and having occasional conversations nothing clicked with kelly until th that that this was a potential reality in our lives until 2018 and it was uh the the very very beginning of 2018 like early january or the very end of 2017 december time frame when a set of circumstances occurred and, and you we were... have done a video i'm sorry to interrupt we have done a video on that that was our very first video that we ever did was it okay yes sir so we talked about that a little bit um, and, and some of the drama involved. The bottom line is, is, is all of a sudden you were faced with, oh my God, what have you been studying? <laughs> and I'd been writing stuff about it. I literally almost had a book published at that point. <laughs> um, and for whatever reason, uh, you know, um, it had not clicked for Kelly that my this was a subject that was loose. something... Oh, this was something that uh, that we were, you know, that was a possibility or what have you. So very interesting. Why is that not clicking? Clicking? Clipping? It was supposed to be clicked. It didn't click. <clears throat> okay. I don't know why. 
that came undone. Okay. Anyway, do we need to have a uh, we we have a uh, wardrobe malfunction? Do we need to have a have a minute here to fix this? <laughs> to turn this way. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> All right, y'all get to see the backstage all at the same time. The bloopers. <laughs> this is part of so, your um, VA. I, I, I can, I can, I can put the and and you know some of this actually a good side note is is that some of this um, may wind up on Patreon. We may not wind up with the full cut on on uh, YouTube, <laughs> but but anyway, we'll see where it goes. Right? Who knows? All kinds of good stuff, oh, wow. but uh, but but seriously, it wasn't until about 2018, early 2018, that you suddenly realized that this wasn't just some sort of theory that I was talking about, but the fact that it was a it was a real possibility yeah. in our lives yes, that you weren't real excited about it. No, sir. <laughs> so here's what I want you to do. Let's let's talk for the first few minutes just about the the process of going from oh my god i can't believe this is even something we're going to talk about to getting to a place where it you know you're you've got your head pretty wrapped around the reality of what's going on because i i think a lot of men sometimes women maybe but i think a lot of men think that it's possible for a lady to go through the whole mental transition from monogamy only inculcation in a gynocentric matriarchal culture. Did you get all these words? Big words. <laughs> get from there to a full acceptance and embracing of polygyny as a legitimate form of marriage in scripture and a legitimate form of marriage in this culture. In a short period of time. In a short period of time. And most people think, oh, yeah, man, six weeks, we got this. Or we can we can make this in six months. Um, or what they see is they see that now we've got things working in the family. And um, you've already seen the uh, – or YouTube hasn't seen it. It's on, my, uh, on the Patreon channel is an uh, interview with Lily, uh, my second, right? Yes, sir. And so a lot of people think – Oh man, I can get there in in this very short period of time. What do you think? Well, I think the it depends on the woman. Okay, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, I process things a lot differently, mm -hmm. um, and I am I'm an emotional creature. As are most women. They are, <laughs> and some women are more so than others. And I'm not going to say that I am more so or not more so um i'm just you know emotional mm -hmm. and so um so for me it took a little while and it i to this day i'm still seeing things in scripture that it's like how did i miss that and the only thing i can figure is it was just time it is yahweh's timing mm -hmm. on all okay. of it and so six years ago i was not supposed to see it right and as aggravating as it may be for both of us because you have said on numerous occasions why can't you see this it's right there in black and white i wasn't supposed to mm -hmm. yahweh had it happen for a reason and so we just have to accept that now we i mean when we look back at hindsight's 2020 agreed and so we have to just say there was a reason why i was not coming along as fast as you wanted me to so i would say from an emotional standpoint i wanted you to come along faster most men do agreed um however i would also say hindsight being 2020 that I wasn't ready. There was, Agreed. I was a long way from being prepared to lead properly. Yes, sir. Um, so let's talk for a few minutes about some of the transition that we both made. Okay. Um, let's start, start by talking maybe, let's talk about me. Okay. Um, yes, sir. And I would say that I thought I had my house in order and I didn't. Yes, sir. To the degree, it was probably in much better order than the average household. Absolutely. But average isn't good enough for this walk. 
I agree and I, I disagree. Okay. Um, because of the fact that this, this is kind of hard to put into words. Um, yes, we, I don't see where we have to be better than average. Yes, we do have to walk, or you have to walk as Yeshua walked. But we also know that Yeshua was absolutely the perfect example mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. And you will never be, or any man will never be perfect. True. And so you walk as, as best as you can. Now, is that average or above average? <clears throat> it depends. Because if you try to be perfect, you're going to bomb. Everything mm -hmm. is going to be, and the wife is going to to see that, notice it, that you are absolutely trying to be like Yeshua. And that's not a bad thing. Right. That is absolutely not a bad thing. But when you're trying so hard to be like him, it's very difficult because well, the, the motivation has to be right. It can't be because I want, you know, I want the in this prize. Instant, you, you want a second wife. I should be doing it because I want to be like Yeshua, not because I'm trying to get something. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, good. And so, um, so yes, you, we both thought that you had the house in order, but when it came to certain things, the house was not in order. Right. And namely, me. Okay. S and also our boys. Okay. So, yeah, definitely. And one of the things, particularly with uh, headship and masculinity and patriarchy, that sort of thing, I've, mm -hmm. I've learned a lot. And there's so many things that I would go back and do a little bit differently with the boys, for sure. Yes, sir. Um, and so that's subject matter for other videos. Uh, I know that we've got some some more stuff coming up for the for the barbershop for the men's <laughs> talk. We'll be doing some of that. I've got uh, got a couple uh, uh, live streams coming up that we'll we'll do some discussion for men. Um, but what are some of the things that had had to change in me that you that you look back now and you see have changed? You had to be more consistent with your discipline toward me. Okay. That was the biggest thing. Because one day you would be very stern on your discipline towards me. And then the next time that something happened, it was, I was expecting something, but nothing Some happened. Some kind of correction, yes. Yes, yes, sir. Right. And so it waffled. Okay. It was not consistent. Okay. And so now you pretty much are, if I do something, which I will say is very rare now because I fear you, but it's a healthy fear. It's like a, a fear in Yeshua, of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And so I fear the consequences that I might receive from being disciplined. Okay. And so now... It's very rare that you have to correct me. And, you know, for the viewer, if this is the first time you're seeing one of our, our um, uh, videos, discussions together, yes, sir. Uh, I actually discussed in uh, one of our other videos how I handle discipline in my home and particularly what works for Kelly, what doesn't work for Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's different, I think, for every woman. So part of it is very important that you as a man get to where you know what works in your house and what doesn't work in your house. Yes, okay. Sir. Now, uh, I'd like to talk for a minute about, you know, you're talking about consistency. One of the things that every time that the subject of polygyny came up, it was like, uh, it, 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 it generally led to a blow up, yes, sir. heated discussion, ice cold for a couple days, um, <laughs> threats, uh, I, I mean, a lot of different things. Yes, sir. And sometimes even the, why do you have to talk about this all the time? Right? <laughs> well, you've never done that, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I didn't talk about it all the time, or I didn't feel like I was talking about it all the time. One of the things, though, that, that I have learned through the process is that the man needs to be 
very intentional and consistent with his teaching, but not forcing. I think you've got to have patience to allow the 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 seed to be planted, the That's seed right. to be watered, the plant to grow. You've got to you, you you're not going to pick the fruit from the tree. Um, you you know you're not going to harvest fruit from a fruit tree the you know three weeks after you put the seed in the ground. Right? Yes, sir. Takes time. Yes, sir. Um, and so I learned a lot of patience. Yes, sir. Uh, also learned a lot about skill in timing and skill in how to go about approaching, not in a manipulative way, right. in a direct way yes, without, um, but doing it in a compassionate way. Yes, sir. Okay. Is that fair? Yes, sir. Um, now, along the way, I want to talk about this for just a second. We've attended some um, some Bib Fam retreats. Yes, sir. Okay, so biblical families, I've talked about it on the channel before. How about you talk a little bit about biblical families and, and the retreats particularly, but talk for a minute. You can talk about your first retreat versus retreats you've had along the way and yes, the most recent retreat yes, and sir. the difference in what you feel going Yes, what you feel during, what you feel after. Talk about that, because this, this, this ought to be good. <laughs> the first one. So what is a biblical families retreat? A biblical families retreat is a, it's a retreat of different um, denominations, I guess you'd say, that come together. We're it's, not all Torah keepers. Yep, it's um, prob probably about 50% Torah keepers, and yes, the rest sir. of it would be ecumenical Christian. Yes, sir. And so we all come together for, sometimes it could be a thir Thursday through a Sunday, or it could be a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, just for the weekend. And we come together, and it's basically just to have discussions um, in a... Um, in a larger group, and then we will um, break out into sessions where it's men only and women only, um, and we eat um, meals, and typically all the meals are clean. Um, mm -hmm. I really appreciate Julie um, for doing that for us. Mm -hmm. She's very um, intentional about not having mm -hmm. anything uh, unclean there and I really really appreciate that her doing that because that that's a lot of trouble for her okay. yeah. it's not trouble but she goes the extra mile for right. us right and so and so I really appreciate that um, and then but the very first retreat that we went to um, my whole intention for going well let me let, let me give some quick background one Sorry. one other point biblical families the retreats are more about patriarchy yes, sir. and family and biblical all marriage. of that. Biblical marriage is high on the list, but yes, it's sir. not the primary issue. But the point is, is everybody that's there typically understands biblical marriage and there are multiple plural families in regular attendance. Yes, sir. So you get a chance to ask questions, see people up close and personal, have interaction, hear stories, the struggles of families going through, what have you, and, and so a lot of that encourages and helps and strengthens, and uh, it's good. So typically two or three retreats a year. Uh, there's a winter retreat. The big one, the big big summer retreat, the big family retreat is uh, is the big one. But our first one was a winter retreat in yes, South Florida. No, Georgia. South Georgia. Yes, South sir. Georgia, yes. yes, sir. Go ahead. And um, also I was going to say as far as the, the biblical families retreat also – there are a lot of just couples there mm -hmm. that believe in the biblical um, marriage mm -hmm. and patriarchy, but do not have may not um, necessarily have, have a second a, a second, but they um, believe in it and are very strong advocates for it. Um, and so, um, so just because you are not plural mar uh, family doesn't mean that you can't join if you believe in in what they. Um, teach or what is being taught yeah. then you're more than welcome to be there yeah. and so I, mm -hmm. I just want to put that little yeah, plug in absolutely. there as well yeah. um, so the first retreat that we went to in South Georgia um, I didn't want to go because I had just found out just like three weeks before it she was, was still raw 
very, very raw. And hot. <laughs> and um, and so Peter said, well, and we've discussed this in the in, in our previous um, videos. In, in a well. lot of detail, so you can yes, just sir. gloss it. And, and you know. so um, I didn't really want to go, but I wanted to go to support you. That's That was the whole reason for me going, was just to, because uh, I... No matter what you have always believed, even though I've kicked and screamed and you've had to pull and push, I've been there by your side. I've stuck by your side throughout this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I've supported you whether I believed it or not. Mm -hmm. I've always done that in our 32 years of marriage. Right. So I was going for you for support. Mm -hmm. But while I was there, um, so we had all of the, they actually didn't, from what I remember, I don't think there was a breakout. No, there was. I'm sorry. There was a breakout session. But um, so I had somebody the very, I mean, we weren't even there long. And I had somebody pull me out and ask me what my story was and so on and so forth. And that just set the tone and made it raw. I, I was ready to go home. I didn't want to be there. I was ready to go home. And then by Saturday night... I literally had a nervous breakdown. I had an anxiety attack and it was awful, absolutely awful. But the one thing that I was very, very impressed with was after one of the ladies went inside and told you what was going on and you said, please have her come inside. You didn't come out and get me. You said you asked one of the ladies or the, that lady to please have her come inside. And you had already told everybody in the group what was going on and what happened when I came inside there is what I remember more about the whole weekend than anything that was said other than on Friday afternoon when we got there. I was prayed over. Mm -hmm. Everybody in that group prayed over me. All right. That they just circled up. A lot of love. Didn't yeah. ask me permission if I if I wanted to be prayed over or anything. Eh, there may have been that, but cer I don't, cer I don't certainly I'm, I'm I, I'm, I, I authorized permission. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let's pray. And so that is what I really remember from the whole weekend was that. So if you were to ask me now on coming um, coming home from murder retreat, what would I remember? And if we were to go back. That would be my takeaway from that retreat. So you met some people at that retreat that at that time, would you have called them friends for life? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Well, I, I was going to say, no, don't ever want to see some of them again, right? No, there was, no, there was, I well, absolutely. I, 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 would, I, I would say certainly, um, and I don't want to call names because I we don't have permission necessarily to call anybody's name. But well, I don't want to call a, 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 a couple from um, from Georgia. Yes, a couple from Georgia. Also, a couple from the Maryland, Maryland area. Yes, yep, sir. those those uh, family from Texas. Would you have called them friends for life at that point? Probably not. It wasn't the Texas family that really, um, I, I was getting to know them. It was the ones from the Alabama area that I didn't want to have anything to do with. <laughs> the one wife. The Just one wife. somebody that said, come here. Yeah, put me on a headlock. and Yeah, that was. Buck up, girl. Yeah. You're former military. You should be able to do this. Kelly was like, oh. Yeah. And so. um uh, and then they're good people and they're friends. Yes, 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 sir. They are. They are now. So then, to go through the other retreats, um, and, and and you don't need to go through them one by one, no, just sir, from I'm a time to. standpoint. But so then we fast forward to another one. I think um, I think it was the Oklahoma mm -hmm. retreat. Um, that was when I we were. This was the after 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 party, I guess you could say. And I remember the gentleman from the husband from the Texas group mm -hmm. was in there and you were in there and maybe one of his wives. I don't really remember everybody, but I remember telling him. Yeah, there were at least at least two there with him that night. I remember. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I remember saying, you know, 
this whole thing is we like to put polygyny as the big thing when polygyny is only a spoke in uh, in the umbrella mm -hmm. biblical marriage or patriarchy is the umbrella itself mm -hmm. and and uh, polygyny is just one of the spokes in the umbrella right and that husband looked at me and said you are absolutely correct and so that's when the pieces kind of started fitting together because i was putting polygyny as the whole umbrella because that's why I felt that everything was all about polygyny and nothing else. It wasn't about patriarchy. It wasn't about headship. It was polygyny. Right. And so that was the retreat that really started the, the puzzle pieces fitting mm -hmm. in there a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to force them in they were starting to slide in there. Yeah, and I, I think what happens, and this is something that's fairly common with people when they discover polygyny, is is polygyny becomes, it appears to be the focus because it's the unusual element that you've never heard of, and now all of a sudden it's a fascinating thing, and so that's what gets talked about all the time. And it's poly, 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 when poly is a subset of biblical marriage. Biblical marriage is the husband being the head and the wife or wives, if more than one is there, in uh, in submission to and working together to accomplish his mission and goal, just as we see in Ghani Den. We talked a little bit about that today as we were doing some study um, online with Lily. We're t yes, you know, and one of the things talking about is that ultimately it's about the the mission that God gives or the vision that God gives to the man and then the women helping him accomplish yes, that. Sir. So we'll, we, we'll get to that in a few minutes, I think, with some of your stuff, your other stuff. Uh, so that's where things started to come together, at least from a theory standpoint. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And then, so we'll completely fast forward to this past summer's, our retreat. And this summer's past retreat is just... I. I love going to the retreats now. I look forward to them. Um, it's it's like a big family reunion. Yes, basically absolutely. Basically is what it is. And when we meet together, it's like everything is, you, you pick up where you left off. Hmm. And it's your family that you love. Yes. <laughs> You enjoy going to this family reunion. Even the ones that put you in a headlock the first time you met them, right? <laughs> and so it's it's enjoyable to be able to to go and to see all these people and just kind of take a five minute, hey, what's been going on? And then you pretty much are up to speed and you just go right on. Now, now a lot of these uh, these ladies you stay in touch with on a regular basis. Yes, sir. How has that helped you? Is that something that's beneficial for somebody who's coming along and understanding headship? Or maybe, maybe a, 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 a woman, a wife who suddenly has this dropped in their lap, does it help to have other ladies around as a resource? Okay. Um, yes, sir. It does. But um, so I am in quite a few different groups. Um, I have um, a group that is all ladies that are married. Mm -hmm. um, there's no um, polygyny whatsoever. And then I'm in uh, our text thread. I'm sorry. And then I am in a text with first, second, and third wives. Or first and third, I'm sorry. Um, sometimes it's a second in there. Mm -hmm. But um, so I'm, I have both going. Um, the support from both is amazing. Um, but going into, and I know this is, we'll talk about this a little later, um, but going into this whole thing, the, um, the family that, um, that truly, truly helped me out the most, um, was the ones that were already in a plural relationship. Okay. Um, but everybody, and that's a family very, that's very been supportive. walking this for twenty five years yes, or sir. more. Okay, yes, sir. yeah, I think it's the same family. I, I know who we're talking about. But um, 
And, and of course, I guess just a side note is we now have a, a type of group as well with the Patreon. Yes, sir. Where in the Telegram groups, we've got a men's section, a women's section, and then we've got a, a joint section so that all... Uh, can can communicate in that in that central area, and then we've got some other spinoff pieces that are connected, um, some content creators that are in the group that collaborate, um, some resources and memes and stuff like that, just some fun stuff. But but the point is, is it's a great in addition to just learning and and being able to discuss headship and patriarchy, it's a great opportunity to fellowship with some other. Like-minded. like-minded people who yes, who are in the journey, some newer, some who have, have been seasoned and been along for a while. Yes, but the point is, is we can help each other. Um, we can lend encouragement to each other because as we know, um, and most everybody else can attest who's been on this journey, we know that a lot of times friends and family aren't as friendly as you'd like for them to be uh, because they don't understand. They have no knowledge. I maybe have no desire for knowledge and understanding, um, but also, uh, you know, are willfully, at times, willfully malicious in trying to take things apart or undermine the head. Uh, so we'll, we'll leave that there. Um, good video the other uh, that we put out here just the, uh, put out just the other day talking about yeah. serpents and, uh, and dealing with those who would go uh, over the wall and around the gate to try to get the sheep instead of going through the head, yes, right? Yeah. So, um, what else would you like to say about retreats and their benefit prior to maybe moving into another area? So the benefits of it is going to be that if you are unsure about, if you feel like, that this is really um so if the husband i will just go ahead and say this if the husband is unsure about how to present this to his wife or how to even talk about it to his wife or, or vice versa there are women who see this first true yes okay. sir yes sir very true um the biblical families retreat is you need to be there it's it, it's a great opportunity to fellowship with like-minded people and to ask a find, lot of questions ask questions find and develop trusted yes, relationships of the same sex ladies ladies men to men uh, who can give wise counsel who can give mentoring yes, sir. who can be a sounding board sometimes a shoulder uh, to cry on the ladies do more crying the men sometimes is like uh <laughs> but well, I was gonna say the women is, is it's emotional su emotional support <laughs> it's it's a support group that's what it is um but seriously uh, it, a fantastic ministry that has benefited us a great deal and yes, and now we're going from those who came in looking for help to now being in a place that we help others yes, sir. right so cool very good so let's move forward a little bit. I know you've got a list of things that you want to talk about that you learned through Polly. And so we're going to get to those because I think those are really good. But I want to talk for a few minutes now about the process that we went through with, uh, with Lily, taking Lily. Yes, okay. Um, the basic information is simply that, uh, that we met her, uh, actually met her through the Patreon group. Yes, sir. Um, and... So essentially began, we observed for a while. I was observing, uh, found, found her to be very interesting yes, sir. Um, as, a, as somebody that at least would be interested in communicating with and finding some stuff out. Ultimately, the father created the circumstances, you know, or allowed the circumstances that we began, began building. But during that, that time frame, um, what I did, I, I had a, a direct chat with her you had a direct chat channel with her, and then the three of us had a had a chat channel uh, all in Telegram so that we could communicate back and forth, plus occasional video chats. Yes, sir. Um, so pros and cons and, and, and good and bad. Your perspective going in and voiced multiple times through this is you're, you wished that the father had brought somebody 
that you could have met in person, face to face, gotten sir. to know. Yes, sir. That wasn't what he did. But no, from an ideal standpoint, in many cases, probably really good to be able to build a friendship and a relationship. Yes, sir. Um, a little more challenging for you, particularly via uh, via chat and text. You text slower and yes, your day is busy, can't really carry a phone like everybody else can. Right. Um, and at points maybe a little chilly because the reality of it was coming along? Yes, sir. As, uh, okay, so talk about that for a minute. I mean, uh, yeah, I was cold. I was cold to both of y'all because I still had a lot of head knowledge and there was no heart knowledge. Okay, explain. Um, I, it was almost, no, it wasn't almost. It was frightening to know that I'm not going to use the language that I want to use. <laughs> um, oh, goodness, this is real now. That this is not a theory. Okay. It's something that's actually... Now, we have had a group chat before with another woman. We did. Okay, but... I had so many red flags with this woman, and you did too. Mm -hmm. And so you were just like, you know, so I was, I was used to a group chat. And I was, I was cold to her as well, but it was, it was a different type. It wasn't, it wasn't as, because I really didn't, it, it, it felt I didn't like... really see it going forward. With her. It felt like to me um, that you were maintaining a more than a professional distance so that, you know, if things didn't work out, you wouldn't be hurt. With the other one? With No, with this one. Oh, with this one. With, with Lily. Well, that's true, too. Um, just because of the fact that... And then there... Oh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's just because of the fact that I've gotten so close to so many women before... And it ended up being very hurt, mm -hmm. um, betrayed. And um, I just didn't want to have to deal with that all over again. And then you getting hurt okay, and so on and so forth. And so because when you hurt, I hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just didn't want to have to deal with that. Right. I really didn't. Um, so, yes, I did... I was rather standoffish, and I have a very difficult time of getting to know somebody um, via text or something like that. I am a in-person person. I get I get to know somebody a whole lot better face to face, and video chats were not even really working for me because it was just like you can hide behind a screen. Mm -hmm. You can tell us what you want us to believe, but are you really that person? Right. So okay. that was, um, that was, so there were some days that, um, in hindsight, I look back and I, I didn't text her as much privately as I did on the group thing, because I wanted you to see what I was saying to her. Okay. But you were encouraging the two of us to have chats. I was, uh, well. But I, I didn't want to have chats. Right. Yeah, I was, I was definitely um, desirous. I, I don't want to say pushing, but certainly desirous of yes, having the two of y'all get to know each other. Yes, sir. You know, in, as individuals in one on one, opposed to only having conversation with myself right. or yes, only sir. within our group. Yes, sir. Because ultimately, in the uh, in in a plural marriage, you know, in in a in a monogamous marriage, there's one relationship. Yes, sir. In a plural marriage, there's going to be this relationship, this relationship, and this relationship. Yes, sir. And then there's going to be a group dynamic. Yes, sir. So you've really got three individual relationships and, and a larger group dynamic to sort of manage and work on. Yes, For sir. someone that has uh, a th third, yes, sir. for example, now you've got all these other relationships and dynamics going on in here. <coughs> Excuse me. 
that uh, that that need to be. Yes, sir. Managed isn't a great word, but you know certainly the head has to be aware of what's going on because yes, you know in a uh, in a business setting the boss needs to know what's going on with all the individuals and in the different all you know employees. departments talking with each other so on yes, and so forth. But if somebody gets fired, not a big deal. We'll just replace them, right? <laughs> In a marriage, not an option. Yes, yeah, sir. not an option in the yes, marriage. Sir. So you definitely have to stay on top of that more. I yes, think. Sir. And I think too, this is where I wanted somebody in person mm -hmm. because I wanted to be have that relationship with this person before you took her as yours. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that that relationship was solid mm -hmm. between she and I. Mm -hmm. And yes, it was my fault that I did not do that with Lily, but like I said before, I don't like getting to know somebody online. And y'all's relationship now since Israel has continued to grow and it's gotten, it's, it's, I would say it's warm and getting better and yes, sir. Et, et cetera. Actually when, and I know this is kind of fast forwarding, um, but I will go ahead and say it this while I'm thinking about it. While we were in Israel, when she left to go back to Germany, um, and we, our plane, I deleted her off of Telegram. She knew that. I have not told you I that. did not know that. I deleted her off of Telegram. And she said, you deleted yourself. She misunderstood me. And I said, no, I deleted you off of Telegram. And she said, why? And I said, you can choose to delete me. I am not saying that you have to. This is what I did. I said, because getting emotional. I said, because I think we need to start over. Mm. And we had, we need to put everything. I need to put everything behind us and start over. Mm. Oh, cool. And that's what she did the exact same thing. And so when she texted me, we didn't text for a few days. There was no, nothing there. And so when she texted me a few days later, it was a brand new chat. Wow, I didn't know that. That's very cool. So, yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Interesting. Well, look at that. Secrets coming out. Y'all got y'all heard it here first. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's really fascinating. So, just start with a clean slate. Yes, sir. That's good. Very good. Very good. Well, I I know that I've been very proud and quite enjoyed I, I literally, as the as the patriarch, I enjoy seeing y'all grow together. I enjoy seeing y'all interact. It, yes, it brings me joy to see the warmth between you. Right, and that's um, what I want. I mean, I can't speak for Lily, but I would think that that would be the yeah. same thing for her okay, as I well. I think so, yeah. But I want to, and that that's the difference between happy and joy. Mm -hmm. I really have, and you, we've talked about this numerous times, this is a conversation that we have numerous times in, in our household, the difference between happiness and joy. Mm -hmm. And happiness is temporary. It can be you buy a car and that yeah. brings you happiness. Three days worth of happiness and, and then you go out and three it, years it's of car not, payments or whatever. It's not solid. <laughs> right. It's not solid. Yeah. And so what I, what I, I want to do is I want to bring you joy. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you have the joy with me, you know, and mm -hmm. Lily, mm -hmm. but especially with me being the first wife, mm -hmm. because I feel like that if I do something wrong, there's not going to be that joy. I'm well, not bringing and, you joy. And I would say you you don't need to or you shouldn't live in fear. No, I, sir, I, I, I don't. I don't think that's... No, sir. Yeah, no, sir. Um, but, but, but if you think about it, you know, it's so often we compare marriage to the relationship between the ecclesia and Messiah, um, which really Ephesians 5, that's, that's what it's all about, is this, right. this yes, relationship, sir. my relationship with Lily, and your relationship with each other. Yes, sir. I, I'll come back to that. But that relationship should image the Messiah with the ecclesia, with the, with the different parts of the body. But we should also see the parts of the body getting along the way they're supposed to get along. Yes, sir. And it brings him joy when the church, horrible word for 
you know, a terrible translation of ecclesia. It's assembly, right? When the, uh, got a whole video about that. Go watch it. The assembly as the, as the bride of, or brides, if you understand what scripture actually says, the brides of Messiah should be bringing him joy and he should, you know, take joy my king yes, in what we do, right? Um, so a song we used to sing, take joy my king. I oh, just my, had that. Yeah. Let yeah. it be a sweet, sweet. That's right. And, and, and that's, that's the way it should be. That's the way this relationship should be, as well as mine with Lily. And then between the two of you, it should be the assembly working together for the king. Right. Very should good. be a team working together. It's teamwork. Very good. Very good. Very cool. So anything else you want to say about the... So the courting procedure for us, just to go back through it, uh, it was probably five months long, all total, something like that, um, four or five months. Um, and going into it, everything was still very much theory, yes, but it was very, you were still working from a very theoretical standpoint, not necessarily processing into reality and practice what we had been learning for six years together, five, five, five and a half years, where I think I had already worked a lot of things into practicality, and maybe that's the difference between the way I think and you think or the way man thinks and woman thinks. I, I... I, I got the sense for a long time and a good ways into even the uh, conversation with Lily that you were sort of secretly hoping that it w that that things wouldn't go there because you're comfortable in your comfort zone. I actually you must be reading my mind because <laughs> I was thinking as you were talking that you know there was a part of me that I wished that this would bomb. Right. That something would happen is that, that probably a normal feeling for a first wife you know i yes <laughs> okay you can answer that but i can't because i that's one question that i've never asked another plural right um wife you know did have you ever wished that so yes it's pro possible that she you know secretly is saying you know yeah please don't let this happen i mean i mm -hmm. i have repented that to Yah that I was I was praying that and I wasn't praying what it be your will. Well it's certainly what his what's his will, will. Right. But part of it too is being in submission and trusting that I'm hearing the Father and yes, that sir. I'm walking out what he's yes, giving sir. us. And so I like I said I've had to repent of that mm -hmm. that I was not praying what what your mission was. Mm -hmm. And I do want to go back and say that as far as you being the head of the house and you not being ready and then looking on into this, so Lily came about came ab yeah, about the time that our marriage was, I'm not going to say solid, but it was at a place where it was, I was understanding submission. Mm -hmm. I was understanding headship. Patriarchy was still kind of, and the plural part was just, I think, that the, I think it was, like you said, I, I just didn't want it to happen. Mm -hmm. I was hoping secretly well, I can't say secretly because Yah knows everything. He knows my heart that it wasn't going to happen. Okay. And so, but Yah brought Lily at a time where you, before Lily came along, you were already in a group with Brazilian men. This was before Lily even right. came along. Right. 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 And she, before she even came to Patreon. Right. And you had said that I don't know how to speak a lick of Portuguese. I Very don't little. know what I'm doing. I need a translator. 
because either he's going to have to, you know, somebody's going to have to translate when I talk and the translator's going to have to, because you were doing video chats with mm -hmm. these men on Shabbat evenings. Right. And so, lo and behold, to accomplish your mission, here comes this woman who is from Brazil and speaks Portuguese. And yet, this wasn't even in your radar. Right. Yeah. No, you, you, you're exactly right. It's, I, and, and, and I would go back and speak to something else. The father didn't bring her along until we were ready. Yes, sir. And we've been married 32 years, but yes, but we we really spent about six years or five and a half years building the foundation for where we are right now. Yes, sir. Um, but then the person that the father brought along, I remember I commented to a brother that's in uh, in a couple of my Telegram groups, a very valuable brother. I commented that I felt like the father had brought a unicorn to my doorstep. I didn't think they existed. <laughs> I didn't think they existed and then here one shows up on my doorstep and it was like it's too good to be true and it fits too many things that I didn't even ask for didn't dream to ask for on some things and yet um, the father answered some of those which to me was just fascinating is unicorn the right description because unicorn I think of a horn out of well the... <laughs> well you, 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 I'm you, sorry no yeah but you... <laughs> no um, no the, the the point being just somebody who's so unusual that they don't exist right. and yet here you know along comes one so yeah. I understand you're okay but yes, yes I understand <laughs> I was like unicorn Wait yeah a no um but but yeah that was a, that that was a, a something there um so i think that as as far as you and coming along and the the whole thing of where it has brought us to today is when ya said okay right i think it's time because I hate using this analogy, but it looks like you have your your ducks in a row. It looks like your family, especially your wife, is where she needs to be. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time to go to the next level. Which does a couple things. One, it gives us a whole new challenge. Yes, because we're walking into you know con continuing to grow, we continue to grow, yes, but it also gives us the experience to take what we've been understanding and learning and teaching, right. and taking it from the from the theoretical, putting it into the practical, and then teaching from those experiences. Yes, sir. So it you know yeah, it's which a, is not easy. No, but it's not an easy task, and there's times that I have said I didn't ask for this. <laughs> and your response is, well, you married me. Yeah. And so you did ask for it. Um, and That's okay. There have been times that I have prayed and I've said, God, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and not so much, not so much plural, but with, uh, with headship and with patriarchy and with the mission and ministry that he's given me, um, and the opportunity, I mean, even with, you know, some of the papers that I've written for academia, uh, academia.edu, or some of the YouTube videos and stuff, it touches the world. Yes, and that wasn't what I set out to do or yes, what I expected. Right. Um, but Just at the same time. obedient yeah. to what y'all ask you yeah. to do. Yeah. And have we lost a lot of friends because of it? Absolutely. We've lost a few. And family? We didn't lose them as we family, but they're not very them, friendly they're sometimes. Not, they're not very friendly. And so, um, um, but there have been times too Do that, we have more friends? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Um, but there has been times that I have said, please tell me there's nothing else. Please tell me that we are at the point of... I am not going to say that we have arrived because no. we... no. The kingdom is when we can say that we. But I can't have, imagine many things harder than what we've been through. And that is what you have. Your yeah. answer has always been. Yeah. And so, because this has been the hardest test, 
And going back to test, if Yahweh gives you a test, this is personal experience, learn from it and pass the test the first time. Because if you don't, you will be given that test over and over and over again until you learn from it and until you pass it. Mm, good stuff. Well, talking about learning things, tell us some things that you have learned through Polly. I know you've got, uh, what have you got, seven, eight points? Nine. And you probably, nine points? Yes, nine. I'll probably want to talk about each one as you go. So give us some points that we can learn or some of, well, some of the lessons that you, first wife, have learned through Polly. And this has just been within two months. So, yeah, two months actively walking it out. Some of these things you, you yes, probably sir. started learning before, but now they're really crystallizing, and it's things you can start talking about. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, the first thing is, um, and I'm, I'm just going to say, Lily, it's not my responsibility. Okay. Why is that important? What does that mean, and why is that, not, why is that important? Because I'm not her boss. Okay. And that will go into... Basically, number two, it's not my resp responsibility to correct her. That's right. Okay. And so um, she's not my responsibility, and it's not my responsibility to correct her. So I can teach her. Okay. And that that goes to Titus. Mm -hmm. Titus 2. Where Tit younger Titus women, two? yes, sir, Titus 2, I think, verse 5. Okay. I think. Um, where older women are to... Uh, teach younger women okay and I can do that with her but I can't correct her mm -hmm. I might suggest mm, you might not want to do that but as far as the correction part that is your responsibility correct it is not mine at all now a point that I want to that I want to address here for just a second because a lot of people I, I think look in this direction in some plural houses there is or plural households, there may be a hierarchy among the ladies where the first wife is the boss and everybody else is subordinate to the first wife as the boss. We've seen that in some circumstances, yes, right? Yes, sir, we have. I, and in some circumstances in Scripture, that's the way that works out. But it doesn't seem to be that way always. Look at Jacob's house. Clearly, he had two wives of, uh, of equality and then two that were made servants to those two women, okay? But um, we also look, there doesn't seem to be any indication of David's household, for example. He had 10 concubines and he had eight wives. Doesn't seem to be a hierarchy based on what we see in Scripture. Uh, some people try to write that in or empower the first wife as being in charge of all the wives. I don't see that. I think ultimately that is something that each man has to choose for his house. And in my house, I, I don't have a hierarchy. No, sir. Uh, you're first and deserve honor and respect for that. However, she is equal in terms of, you know, she's a wife. She's, yes, sir. she's my woman. You're my woman. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So from that perspective, you don't have authority over her to correct her. You don't have yes, authority. Sir. And ultimately, she's not your responsibility. Yes, you sir. should work together. But if there's a problem, if you can't work it out right. equitably, what do you do? Come to you. Come to me. Okay. Right. That's correct. And I have, I've said this too, that um, if there is a problem between us, then like you said, we are to work it out. Um, mm -hmm. Not either one of us clam up and then immediately go to you. Right. Because then it's like, well, what did I do wrong? If you're not right. going to tell me what I did wrong, then... It, it doesn't make sense. Right. And so if if I do something wrong, I would expect Lily to say something to me mm -hmm. and not go directly to you. Right. And then if um, if I do something wrong, I want Lily to say, hey, you know, I, I don't, you know, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. instead of me going to you, you know, whatever. Right. Vice versa. But, but ultimately, communication. Communication. Yes, sir. And we could probably hit that point five or six times, right? Communicate, communicate, communicate. Yes, sir. Very, very important. There's got to be open lines of communication. Yes, and sir. And it's, it's always been that way here. Yes, sir. If, if communication breaks down, the next thing that happens is things, you know, things start getting broken. Yes, sir. People 
people get hurt, that kind of thing. Yes, it's sir. better to better to have this communication. Yes, sir. So as long as that communication line, this one, these are open yes, and sir. we're having this communication. Yeah. And that was one thing that my mom noticed when um, when I was in the hospital, um, when you first met me in Way 91. Back, yeah. Um, that was the one thing that my mom said um, because we would spend, you'd come home at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, we'd talk for two hours, Star Trek would come on, you'd talk, you'd watch Star Trek from 7 to 8, and then you call me at 8 and we talk till 10. That communication has always been there. And my mom right. even made the comment that as, if you guys are going to keep that communication, forever, then you're going to have no problems. And that is one thing that I have always, when I have something that bothers me, I'm very verbal. I am not a person that, I, I do keep a journal, but it's a journal that I write things that I'm learning on or things that I'm discouraged about or whatever. I'm verbal. Mm -hmm. I have to talk my emotions out. I have to, you know, I, I have to. I Because if I don't, you know that um exactly exactly so i can't bottle no. them up no. i have to i have to talk about them no. so um and then i have had a lot of people that says that have told me now that i don't know how you're doing it you are a very strong person and i look at that now and i've had people tell me that because of my accident because of the way that i work out the way that i carry myself but now when they tell me that you are, I don't know how you're doing it, you're a strong person. I look at this very differently now because I don't think you realize how strong you are until you're put into that situation. Yeah. And so, Most people underestimate their ability to perform and overestimate their ability for success or their... Yes, sir their probability of success. My strength, and here's two examples that are strong versus strong. When, so I had my accident and I started working out and people are like, wow, you're really strong and so on and so forth. So I am, I had to feel like I had to prove myself. Yeah, I am strong. I'm, yeah. Just because I don't have hands doesn't mean I can't work out. I'll show you type thing. This is a totally different strong. This strong is, y'all put this in our laps. Well, yeah, in our laps. And we're moving forward. And he is going to show his honor and glory through it. Mm. Mm. Amen. Use us to display his glory. Yes, sir. Excellent. Number five. Um, my Did you do number four? Oh, it's okay to cry. Yeah. <laughs> we know it's okay to cry, but 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 yeah, this it's... this is important, and, and I, I mean, you have ladies now who are going through the early stages who call you and want to talk. Yes, sir. And you can sit down and have a conversation with them and help them work through the emotions that you worked through yes, initially, uh, because in in and one I'm respect, I'm willing to cry with them. Yeah, it's okay to cry. In, in one respect, we have all, men and women, been raised in this monogamy-only culture that is fairly gynocentric. Yes, sir. I mean, it is, it is a matriarchal culture, largely, that we're raised in. And then all of a sudden, the woman, you know, the, 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 the woman, she's still the only wife, but she's dethroned. She's no longer the queen, where, in you know, most cases the man comes and gets on one knee and says will you please marry me and you never did that to me i didn't um this was even before way i mean we're talking many 32 years right and yeah. you never did that with but me. but i but i didn't i didn't know what i know now even just the symbolism of a man getting yes, on sir. his knees and asking a woman to please marry him that's that's not so much chivalrous as it's an act of uh, subservience or but whatever. i think it's just hilarious um, that you didn't even do yeah. that with me 32 years ago right so yeah. um didn't do it with either one of you <laughs> but yeah 32 years ago um but now you're in a place where 
you know, ladies who they go through the emotion because now you've been dethroned as the queen and potentially somebody else is coming in at some point in the future. And so <laughs> ladies, I mean, this, this gives the sense that the whole world that they've been reared in this princess mentality and this, uh, this, the, the, the matriarchal focus of everything is suddenly exploding. Yes, sir. And, uh, and, and it can be very difficult emotionally for a woman. Right? Can be. It is. <laughs> well, I, I, I say it can be because I don't know that every woman has that response, but most probably do. I would think the woman that comes to the man will not have this response. Right. She will not have these feelings. Because she may have already worked through some of that even, you know, or at least the intellectual side of it. She understands it and it makes sense. And yeah. Yes, okay. sir. Yeah. But it is okay to cry. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Um, my relationship with Yahweh and Peter has become closer. Okay. Explain. Um, I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing, what Scripture says that I am to be mm -hmm. doing as far as the um, First Corinthians. Mm -hmm. um, I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing that of you, mm -hmm. that you, of the things that you ask me to do. Our, um, our, our marriage dynamic has changed. Um, For the... Worse? No, sir. For the better? For the better. Okay, I, I just want to be clarified on this. <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> yes, sir. But, uh, you know, with, with me, with, uh, with Yahweh as well, more faith in Him. Yes, sir. Seeing His hand, seeing blessings that come through what He's given us. Yes, sir. Um, with me maybe having more faith in my ability as you see me step up to the to the plate yes, uh, and take on what's laid before us and do it better i think i still have growth to do but certainly better than i think i was doing it before um, you've always had wonderful leadership in our family um but like i said it wasn't consistent and so and you were more consistent in some areas than you were in the others. And I think the where your, your flaw was, was in the, the patriarchy part. Mm -hmm. That was where your flaw was. And so that's, that's the area that we really, really had to work on. It's easy to just let things go along instead of being intentional and, and as a man, being uncomfortable and going and dealing with the problem, whatever it may be, right. instead, of, uh, instead of just Shrugging your shoulders and, well, you know, I can live with that. It's not a problem. I'll just kind of, yeah. Dead fish float downstream. Well, and that is um, the conversation that we had the other day um, about the, um, and you know which conversation that I'm referring to, right? That we conversed I, more than once <laughs> since then. I, I should have written it down. <laughs> um, it, no, it was... Um, the conversation of when um, when you came in the door of the office and you stood right there and you told me yes sir and I don't remember the details of it but I remember that's the conversation you're talking about yes sir <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back to that <laughs> yeah. um, and we discussed this right here is uh, what we we discussed partly today in scripture um, which one number six that so read the point. I mean, they need to know what yes, you're sir, talking about. I am. Um, woman is for the man. Yahweh brought the second wife to Peter, Lily, to accomplish his mission, not mine. I have mine, my own mission for you. Right. So she has a purpose for helping me. Lily has a purpose for helping me. Um, he didn't bring Lily to help her. Right. right. It's. Each of you is a help me to me. Just like uh, you look at Rachel and Leah and Bill and Zilpah each yes, had their roles in helping Jacob with his house. Yes, sir. And I wrote this down weeks ago. Hmm. That woman was for man and not man for woman. And mm -hmm. that Yahweh brought Lily to help you with your mission, hmm. not mine. And I have my own mission. 
or, or my uh, own um you have you have your own pieces for for my mission yes, yes sir yes yes sir yes, because that's what it's all about it's about accomplishing the mission of the man right not accomplishing the mission of the woman right and each each of the ladies and in my case bring different gifts to the table different skill sets to the table that help give fullness or breadth to what I can accomplish as a man. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Um, this one we might be on a, a little longer than normal because of the fact that... So I have had in, um, in counseling sessions, I've had some women say to me that if the husband brings another um, woman in, that they're leaving. No, and you've so, never said that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> early on, yes, and actually, she her immediate response. You can go back and watch the first video that we did together in this. Um, in, in that video, her immediate response when I mentioned, uh, you know, or, or polygyny came up, she said, "I want a divorce," and I said, "No, you can't have one." Yes, but sir. that was, you know, her immediate response was, where's the door? Yes, um, but there are a lot of women that will continue to hold that threat over their husband. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You've got some good stuff right here. So Let them have it. I was, I have a lot of, this is crazy. I, I have a lot of thoughts while I'm in the shower. Um, this is my time and I'm just, sitting there or standing there because it's the shower and so this thought came into my head and when I got out I came to Peter and told him this and he was just like wow that was that's crazy so the question that I had was why would I want the second wife to have my position as first that would be rebellion on my part. At first, I thought... Right. If you were to leave, you give up your seat. Right. Yes, sir. And at first, I thought, well, that's kind of... I was That's being stingy. Why would I want... But then the more I thought about it, it's like, no, that's rebellion. That's absolutely rebellion. And then Yahweh gave me this... Re rebellion how? By, well, first of all, he put you in that chair. Yes, sir. And you you choose to vacate that chair. Yes, sir. Okay, I and just so, I want to be clear. And so, well, that's the answer that Yeshua gave that Yahweh gave me. If Yeshua offered you a seat at His table, and you took it, would you give that seat up to someone else? No. And we're not talking about being nice. We're talking about saying, I don't want this seat anymore. I'm out. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah, you're not being, oh, you know, here, you can have my seat. I'll go sit somewhere else. You wouldn't even do that. Right. Especially if you were right next to him or even a few seats down or on the same row. Right. You're not going to, but especially if he says, come and sit right here next to me. Right. So you came to a place that you understood that 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 you were given this place in my house. Yes, sir. And you suddenly realized that it would be an act of rebellion to vacate it. Yes, sir. Because you didn't like the way I was managing my house. Yes, sir. Wow. So I would not give up my seat if Yeshua you know, gave me a seat next to him or wherever that case may be. No, I would, that would be rebellion on his. On your part. On my part yeah. to him. Yeah. Very good. That's good stuff right there. And then um, the next one is, and these are Peter's words. Are you okay with me reading this? Yeah, go ahead. I okay. guess. The more submissive, submissive oh, yeah. I have become... The sexier I've become. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, ladies, you want to be uh, you want to be sexy to your man. Submission is the key. I'm telling you. 
And it doesn't have, that doesn't mean that it's an act of sex. It just means that. But that helps. <laughs> that just means that you, you see me in a totally different way. Mm-hmm. Than when I, I am. see you the way you were created to be instead of you trying to be something you're not created to be. You're created to be my help me. Yes, sir. That's good. You're sexy when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, yes, not when you're trying to do my job or somebody else's job. And you're not referring to when you say you're doing my when you're saying you're doing your job, you're not meaning Cooking that, cooking a meal, or cleaning, or anything like that. You're not trying to be the head of the house. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Or it's uh, you know to me it's sexy when she comes and asks permission for something, or when she says yes, sir, no, sir, All right? Because she honors me every time that she does those things. She honors me as the head, right? What's that? And you want to talk about that on a different well, video, but you can make the point. Go ahead. Um, when Peter was talking about that, I don't. Um, it. I'm not. I'm not sexy when I try to be the head of the house. So in another list <laughs> that I have started in my book, it is titled feminism. And so the other night I thought. Feminism, the woman controls situations because they fear the man would not handle them correctly. And so that was where I was never femi I, a feministic person. Right. I had feminism tendencies. As do most. I, I mean, it's the air that we breathe and the water that we swim in, you know? Yeah. But then it's you the have culture. some women that are just born and raised that way <laughs> not in my house <laughs> not interested yeah and so and the last thing that i have learned is and this one is been probably the hardest lesson that i've had to learn now lily is not here yet we haven't said that in this video All right we've talked about her but lily is not here lily is still in germany she will be here in December for five weeks until the end of the BibFam retreat, and then she'll go back to Germany. Mm -hmm. And maybe in later videos, we will explain why she's not here. But um, so I really have not had, this is where the head knowledge is, and then this is where I will learn this but right now, this is still a hard pill to swallow. And so my job as the first wife does not mean that I am better than Lily, even though I've been married longer and I can teach her. She is here to help me accomplish the mission better. Or to, which, uh, help, help me accomplish, right. Yes, sir. Right, yeah. And so that is... That's a hard pill to swallow because of the fact Why? that because I've always been here to accomplish the mission. Mm -hmm. I've always been the one that you ask my opinion on. I have always, it's always been an I, 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 mm. I. And so now, now it I'm becomes not, a shared journey between you and Lily working together. It's not a yeah. French wee oui, wee. Oui. It is. <laughs> Oui, oui, monsieur. No, go um, ahead. So it's, it's not a monogamy together now. It's a plural together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard pill that I'm going to have to learn. It's not a, I, 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 would, I would say don't approach it as a hard pill. It's just that you recognize the lessons there. You recognize it's an adjustment you get to make. Fair. And so yes, as sir. you go into it, I, I think half the battle is recognizing that's what we get to work with, or yes, that's sir. where we're headed. Now, how do we do this and walk it out in the most gracious way possible? Yeah. Fair. That, yes, I like that. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and to, be, to be really honest, we've, we've all only been in the same house for 11 days during the time frame that we were in Israel. 
Um, and even then, the ladies working together in the kitchen, the, you know, doing stuff together. We were together, yes, but things changed. Right. That last week. And and I'm not. I, I, and and some of that was, you know, the initial transition and everything. Where I was going is I'm looking forward to these five weeks because it'll be time to really kind of the rubber meets the road and to start really meshing things together and enjoying being working together and, and past, under our you know, own. Yeah. In Israel, we weren't in our own territory. Right. And this is Airbnbs and, you know, daily, daily transition and stuff like that with travel. Right. And those it was kind a of vacation. Things. It wasn't we it, were not doing our day to day thing. No, we weren't feeding the animals. <laughs> well, it's what we do here. Oh. Every day we got to go feed the animals, right? Oh. No, I, yeah. Well, and your yeah. job. And the uh, jobs. And of course, she's going to be working. I'll be working, so on and so you forth. You know, and then no. she will get to see exactly what goes on in our home. We get to take the next step in putting it all together. Yes, sir. So, yeah. Cool. Excellent. Those are nine great points. What else you got? Whatever you wanna. So, yeah, we're at, this says an hour and twenty minutes in. Um, I don't, you know, I know we don't. We, there's something else we want to talk about on a different video that we yes, may, may may bring back. Um, is there anything you want to close with? Well, I think that. Um, since we, I've always stood on, I really want to do what is right in Yahweh's eyes. Mm -hmm. And I want to do what is right in your eyes. I've always stood on that. And, but I also had a part of me that, now I've never been a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. Be, well, let me back up. I used to be a people pleaser. Because I wanted to make sure that I had all my T's crossed, all my eye, dot, the dot over my eye. I wanted to make sure that, that everybody was happy. When in the long run, it made me absolutely miserable. Mm -hmm. And so until I learned that I can't please everybody, I think that's when it became more of a, the only person that I need to please is Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do need to please you too. Yeah. But I am human and I will fall. When you are pleasing him, you should be pleasing to me. Yes, sir. Because I'm seeking his heart and his will. Yes, sir. And if you're seeking his heart and his will, we should be getting closer and closer as we go. Right? Yes, sir. And that goes back to number five. My relationship with Yahweh and Peter has become closer. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's okay to cry. No, just kidding. <laughs> and so the the one thing that I have learned as far as this whole thing is basically I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand with people and be judged by God. And stand with the world, yeah. Completely agree. I completely agree. And that's not an easy lesson to learn. No, sir, it's not. But I think in walking with the king, until we learn that lesson, we're not fully going to embrace him. And once we do learn that lesson, it doesn't make life easier, no, but sir. it does does help us understand that i mean didn't he warn us he said you know yes, um that that we would be persecuted yes sir right and we are finding that out more now since we have crossed into the polygenist or it's it that's an interesting sifting mechanism that the father has yes sir okay uh, and we had a really good conversation even earlier today of was it was it with lily when we were talking with lily about the fact that uh, polygyny exposes hearts. Yes, sir. 
Um, well, we talk about that anyway. And, and we've talked about it other times. We talked yeah. about it this yeah. morning during our, our Torah session. So so the Torah, coming into the Torah journey and that sort of thing, was uh, was a big testing ground. And the Father taught us, but and we lost a lot of friends. Yes, sir. Um, I was a pastor at the time, got basically asked to leave my denomination, yes, sir. or the denomination that I was a part of. And lost all of the friends that we had that were pastors or pastors' wives or, you know, that that whole circle, you know, suddenly we were persona non grata um, just because we wanted to follow truth. And, and I, you know, we know that's the case that happens with so many other people too because we mm-hmm. know lots of people that have made that transition saying, no, what does Scripture say? I just want to do what Scripture says. Right. And then in doing that, people around them are like, not, don't don't want to be around you, don't know you, don't care, not interested anymore. Right. Um, very common, family and friends. Yes, um, and so we've learned progressively, and the lessons have gotten harder as we've gone, but it's the same lesson that keeps coming back is, I'd rather be judged by God. And ju- be judged by the world. Or I'd, I'd rather stand with God, God and, be, and judged be judged by, by the, the world, world than to be judged by the world. To stand with the world and be judged by, judged by God. I blew it up. You did well. I blushed. No, you did well. So, all right, guys. Well, fantastic. Um, we are going to be having some more conversations, and we will have, uh, you know, when Lily's going to be here in a few weeks, we will have uh, a conversation with the three of us, maybe more than once. Probably going to do a, uh, a YouTube Live in there somewhere because we'd love to answer questions and have uh, opportunity to interact with our uh, subscriber base. Um, definitely going to be doing more interaction in Patreon with uh, with the three of us being able to do that, and we've got um, we've got some other stuff that's uh, that's already already up there. Um, if you would be interested in more, if you want to hear more, and certainly some uh, some some deeper thoughts on things that we don't always share on on YouTube, um, come join us on Patreon. Uh, we would love to have you, particularly in the uh, at the uh, supporter to level and above because then that puts you in um, in our telegram community where you have daily contact can can connect with us but many others like us on a daily basis it's just we're we're there it's regular it's friends and family Um, also for anybody who's interested the uh, biblical families retreat in the in January will be coming up it's in the southwestern United States you need to um, email either join Biblical Families Forum online and then ask for information or I'll, I'll put a link down here or maybe I'll put it on the screen put it on the screen right here um, for retreats at biblicalfamilies plural dot org and uh, if you send an email to retreats at biblicalfamilies.org and just ask for re- to be put on the retreat list, uh, there'll be probably a quick vetting no email, worries. and then you'll be added and you'll get information in the future for, for retreats. Um, but we'll be there, we'll, we'll be there in January, uh, mm-hmm. all three of us, and we'd love to see you, love to be able to interact with you um, and uh, introduce you to all of our other family, right? Uh, our, our Bib Fam family. So. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, um, that's all we've got here, and we'll be bringing more later. For King and Kingdom, we bid you shalom.